Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a absolutely beautiful day at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, where we have never been. This is actually our third try trying to get through these gates. And thanks to COVID, thanks to weather, thanks to a million other things, we haven't actually been able to do it. So we're super excited to be here. It is a gorgeous day. And I think that we're actually here for Food and Wine Festival as well. Yes, we are. Oh, it looks like Escape from Pompeii is closed. Dang it. And you know how much I love water rides. So we're going to be riding some rides we've never ridden before. We're going to be eating some food that is only offered seasonally. And we've heard a rumor that we might be here for the surprise grand opening of the Loch Ness Monster, the interlocking loop coaster that's been down since COVID. That is not confirmed. That, that is a rumor. That is a rumor. That we heard but, from employees. But if it happens, what a day this would be. Like a growing number of theme parks, Busch Gardens, of course, has lockers. You're not allowed to take bags onto the ride or onto the ride platform, so you're gonna need to stow all of your items, anything that could fly off of you during the ride, in a locker before you board. That would normally mean we're putting the camera away and we're not allowed to get any footage. At Busch Gardens, you can actually request a photographer card to take a GoPro in a mounted harness, as long as it is secure and it has a case to snap closed, you can take a GoPro on the ride. You just have to go to guest services, get it spot checked by a supervisor, and they will give you a camera card that you can show the ride operator. So it's goodbye for now, A camera. And hello, B cam. opener. Perfect opener. B&M never disappoints. This was obviously very comparable to riding Candemonium, except that I got to take a GoPro on, yeah. which made it Amazing. that much more enjoyable it's also a ride. It's a completely different layout. It it's very like different. Right it runs right alongside the water. It was it awesome. Was very pretty. It was high speed. It was adrenaline inducing. It had lots of airtime hills and it was super duper smooth. Much like Epcot's World Showcase, there's a bunch of different countries here and the park is divided into different cultural areas. And especially during Food and Wine hey, Festival, there's good reason to visit each country Bruin. because they have specific foods that are fun to eat in each place. Unlike Epcot's World Showcase, there's a lot of dead ends in this park. So we just were stuck in the circus area near Tempesto, which I think is near the South Korea booth, nowhere near Germany, where we're trying to go. So, you may want to download a map before you get here. That's one thing we didn't do. Oh, I am so looking forward to that. <laughs> this is the one, guys. Of everything that we've heard about, of everything that was on our bucket list to do today, this is why we had to wait until now to come to Bush Gardens after several tries trying to get there in 2020 because this is the first season where Verbolton has been open and I've been looking forward to Verbolton since the day I first heard about it. Check, I'm looking back. Oh, Volkswagen.
I think it was in the black forest. Wow! That was something. All the hype was worth it. One of my favorite theme park rides ever. Multi-launch, dark ride components, drop track. Drop track. Drop track. Haven't what? That drop track? Haggard's. That's ha yeah. We're talking Haggard's classifications here. Yeah, that was amazing. This is such a great theme park. It's a park that has theming. That is so hard to find in this area. In America. <laughs> Outside of Orlando. <laughs> yes, if you're not in Orlando, you would never see a castle like this in a theme park. This is incredible. Tragically, this particular castle used to be a dark ride, one of the park's only dark rides, and was apparently decommissioned not that long ago. Curse of Dark Castle was one that was on a YouTube video I saw that was like top 20 dark rides in North America. I guess it just didn't have the throughput they were looking for because it is, it is gone. It would have been nice to experience, but still the facade is fun to look at. At least they left that. Well, it's been a fun morning of rides, but you know, sooner or later we're gonna have to start digging into that sampler pass we bought for the food and wine festival. Otherwise, we basically just wasted our money. Plus, we're getting hungry anyway. <sighs> Alas, the one type of line you can never fast pass. Thank you. Hush puppies. So Katie decided to go with bacon cheddar hush puppies from Virginia to begin her food and wine experience today. And I think there's honey on them and some sort of butter. I don't know, I'm just gonna go for it because I'm hungry. It was a bit of a wait. Oh man. Was it worth the wait? Hush puppies are like savory donuts. What's the sauce that they came with? This is just, I think this is like a honey butter. Ooh. And then it, there's like honey drizzled on them. It's a good hush puppy. I gotta say, I don't think I can taste like the bacon cheddar element, but it definitely tastes good. Our next stop was the Mediterranean booth, which is over by the defunct Pompeii ride. We got lamb sliders and the Spanakopina. The lamb sliders, I think, were a pretty good deal because yeah. under, under normal circumstances, they'd be $6.50 a piece, but yeah. we actually got the 10 item sampler card, so we probably saved about $3 total on this yeah. meal. Oh, there's some sort of like cheesy sauce on there too. Mm -hmm. this is you used the spoon. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, I suppose you did have the spoon right there. Mm. Mm. Good? Yep. Does it give you reason to live? Mm-hmm. Oh good. I was worried it wouldn't. We've had lamb, yes. But what about the Spanakopita? Spanakopita. Spanakopita. It's a little bit dribbly. Yeah, not as thick But as... I like it. I definitely like it. Mm -hmm. It's got a weird, weird yeah. heat behind it. Yeah, it's it. like a heat. It's gotta be, I would think garlic would be a... Yeah, garlic ranch. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's not accurate, but it's closest to accurate as I can get. Man, this park is just so gosh darn pretty. It has no business being this pretty. All right, after watching it from all around the park all day, we are finally about to go join the Griffin Queue. This is our first ever dive coaster. Never been on a dive coaster before. So this will be an experience to remember. And for you to remember, right along with us. Boarding guests, please step quickly and carefully to the seats directly in front of you. With that? Please remember to leave one seat between you and the party next to you. As a reminder, loose articles are not permitted on Griffins. Hey, are you vlogging? Are you vlogging on the camera? Hey! What's up, guys? Now prepare to enjoy the power and speed of the mythical Griffin. Ooh. A little unnerving to have dangly feet. Hey, it's like I'm going up the stairs! Oh! <laughs> 
so we just did a little bit of a double dip because the, as it turns out, there were no lockers available at all in the Griffin locker area. So we had to come all the way over here to Invader and drop our stuff in the lockers next to the Scoot, which is currently closed. Run all the way back to Griffin, get through the Griffin line, get off Griffin, come back over to Invader. And while we were here in Invader, we just figured, well, the stuff's already in a locker. Let's go ahead and go on Invader. So we did that as well. I would have to say I am not a huge fan of the locker situation here. It works when it works, but when it doesn't, it breaks down real, real badly. Because when there's no lockers available in a ride queue, you're like a solid country away from the next, next available set of lockers. So that's something I would like to see change. But generally speaking, I've been pretty, pretty impressed with the park elsewise across the board today. We also want to give a shout out to our newest subscriber, Wishing Mouse, who subscribed to us on the Griffin Ride platform because it turns out she's a ride off here and saw us filming. So hello, Wishing Mouse. Welcome to the family. We have subbed to you as well. Looking forward to having many adventures together. Those of you who have been watching for a while, you'll know that when we travel to theme parks, we're mostly looking for coaster credits. If we get some other stuff, it's usually the unique stuff, things you can't do or see or eat anywhere else. That's the kind of stuff we're after. So for today's coaster credits, we've got a throwaway yet to do on Grover in Sesame Street Land. And then we've got Alpengeist. All the other coasters that we'd be looking for today are closed. Loch Ness Monster, it's getting kind of late. I'm thinking maybe it's not going to open. That rumor might have been false. So we'll have to hold that out for next time. But for now, we're headed towards our last major coaster credit of the day. B&M suspended Alpengeist. Looking forward to it. The sun is setting and the clock says it's half past dinner time. And all roads seem to lead to the House Festivus. Whoa. Um, this is really cool. The Uber Van has a show in 15 minutes. Let's do it. When I said there was a big hole in my tummy, I meant it, but I don't know if I meant quite this big a hole. I didn't think you were gonna go for the sampler plate. Well, the problem is they they got me by doing exactly what buffets always do. They put the stuff that you know you might have room for, but we're trying not to have to go through first. First. They put cheesecake right at the front of the line, and then they make me pick out my main course last. All right, you got the sausage sampler. Yeah, it's like worst. I honestly don't know. It's three different. I know there's sauerkraut in there, which is why I avoided it. But I got a little bit, I think, in my I mean, yeah, I total love sauerkraut. Anyway. This is German potatoes, sauerkraut, and then three different kinds of sausage worst. Bratwurst. Bratwurst. I don't know. I'm just gonna eat it. Well, aren't you cultured? Because that's what I do. Mine has some of the same things that Katie's has, including a sample sausage here, which I think is just called a sausage. I don't think it's bratwurst or anything special. There's chicken here, which has been roasted in a German fashion. I'm not sure what the spices and whatnot are on top, but I'll find out momentarily. Then underneath, this is a grilled brisket. 
And here are my potatoes, mm. much like the ones that were afforded They're to Katie. Ribs. Those are ribs? Yep, those are ribs. Well, I like ribs better than brisket, so that's even better. The other stuff I think you'll know just by looking at it. Mozzarella sticks, cheesecake, boring old house salad. I just got them because they were there. Not because I needed it, not because I wanted it, just because it was there. Fam, we are exactly one hour and 14 minutes to close. I think at this point it's a given we're not gonna get to everything, and that's okay because we never planned to get to absolutely everything today. Some stuff is closed anyway, and the stuff that we didn't get to do today, we have tomorrow to do. But we're not here for a full day tomorrow, so one thing that we absolutely positively have to do tonight is night rides. And so the priority ride we've chosen for a night ride is the ride, which of course is exactly the same because most of it is inside. So it comes out and pops you out at night and I want to do the dive. You want to do the dive at night? Yeah. And the headlights are on. And the headlights are on. It's like Hagrid's. Don't look back as you day one. What a park. The individual areas are very well themed. The rides are very well themed. Even Invader, which is a wooden coaster, had oh, that was amazing theming. quite a bit of theming on it. So even like know. a themed ride uh, safety video. We're talking, like, I just imagineering Disney level theming going on here. Yeah. All of this to say there is plenty to do here. This is a park and a half. We really are glad we set aside a day and a half to do the park, even with certain rides closed. But the rewritability of everything that's here and everything we did today is up there. Right. So that's gonna do it for tonight, everyone. Sleep tight, stay safe. Remember that every day is a new adventure and that there are theme parks out there that you haven't given a chance yet. If this is one of them, get here. Get here yesterday. <laughs> Goodbye.